Bill, you want to check this job out? It's done. Good boy, Joe. You know you really turn out these lube jobs. Well, nothing to it, Bill. Oh, by the way, I noticed something about the way this clutch acts. What seems to be wrong? There's no free play in the clutch pedal, Bill. Yeah? Well, I'll take it out and test it. Then we'll get Charlie to check it over. Maybe the linkage needs adjusting. Okay, Bill. Say, Charlie, will you adjust the clutch linkage on this car? The free play's all gone, and she slipped a little on that hill on 3rd Street. Okay, Bill. Put her on the hoist, Joe. Well, I can give the pedal a little more free play, but it won't do any good. How come, Charlie? This release bearing fork is right up against the bell housing. Chances are the disc spacings are badly worn. Is that really bad, Charlie? Well, the clutch is probably slipping a little now. If you run her hard, she might burn right out. I'll tell Bill to get Mr. Johnson, the owner, on the phone. This clutch ought to be looked into before something happens to it. So if I were you, Mr. Johnson, I'd get the clutch fixed before you go on the trip. Might let you down any time now. Well, okay, Bill, if you say so. Then go ahead and fix it. So let's get at this clutch and find out what's wrong, Charlie. Pete, our new man, can help you, so you'll finish in time. Okay, Bill. Say, Pete, give Charlie a hand here, will you? This will give you a chance to see what our clutches are like. Be right there, Charlie. Maybe I can help too, boys. Hi, Tech. Come on aboard. Oh, that's trouble, eh? I'll say. Look at this disc. Pretty well gone, isn't it? What kind of a disc is that, Charlie? Well, that's a Borg and Beck job, Pete. You've seen clutch discs that are built like this. The engine power goes from the flywheel and the pressure plate to the facings. Now, these facings, they're riveted to cushion springs that soften the engagement. The power goes through them, and then it goes through the hub damper unit. The damper unit stops the engine power impulses from getting to the transmission, right? Right, Pete. It acts like a shock absorber. When a surge of power reaches the clutch, it compresses these springs, but... Between the hub and the disc, there are thin friction shims. These shims slow down the action of the springs and absorb the power impulses. If oil gets on those washers, or if they wear, the damper fails, and you may get a noise at certain speeds. Right, Charlie. I've heard of fellas taking transmissions or rear ends apart to look for that kind of noise. Well, it looks like this disc is all through. These facings are worn and should be replaced. Should I get new facings out of stock, Charlie? Uh-uh, Pete. Refacing a worn-out disc sometimes doesn't pay. Better put in a new disc. You see, refacing might make the contact surface irregular unless you have the equipment the manufacturers have. Besides, if this clutch has been slipping very long, the cushion springs under the facings might have lost their arch from the heat. And if the arch goes, the disc loses its cushioning action, and you get chatter, right? That's true, Pete. And another thing. The friction washers inside may have lost their damping ability, and you may get that gear rattle. So all in all, if you replace the disc, it won't cost much more once you have the clutch apart, and you'll probably be doing your customer a favor. Say, hey, fellas, this pressure plate's in good shape. How's the flywheel? It looked okay to me, Tech. A badly scored pressure plate or flywheel would raise hob with a new disc, so they should be replaced. But if they're just scratched, you can clean them with emery cloth. Well, all I have to do is to clean up this cover and the flywheel with solvent and blow them dry, right? Yeah, get all the dust and grease out, but don't forget to re-lubricate the drive lugs with a graphite base grease. How about wheel bearing grease, Tech? That'll do, but never use oil. It just won't stay on and it may end up on the disc. Now I'll put the cover assembly in this fixture and set the levers. Hey, Charlie? Why, no, Pete, not on this job. But if the lever adjustments are not absolutely even, we'll have a cock pressure plate. And that means uneven contact with the disc with possible chatter, and maybe a noisy release bearing when you're engaging or disengaging. All that's true, Pete, but this job didn't chatter when Bill tested it. Besides, I don't think this clutch has been touched before. 
There's no signs of restaking on the adjusting nuts, so the levers are probably okay. Then you won't check the pressure springs either, eh, Charlie? No, not in this case, Pete. But if the spring showed any signs of overheating, like bird paint, or if the bottom coils were too close together, why, it's best to replace them. Say, Charlie, just how does this Borg and Beck pressure plate operate? Well, when the clutch is engaged, the pressure springs press the pressure plate against the disc. Now, when you depress the clutch pedal, the release bearing pushes the long ends of the levers in. At the same time, the short ends of the levers pull the pressure plate away from the disc. This compresses the pressure spring. Then when you release the clutch pedal, the long ends of the levers back off, allowing the pressure springs to push the plate against the disc again. I see. Now suppose you had to adjust the levers. What's the procedure? Well, with a cover in the fixture, First, you make a rough setting of the eye bolts. This moves the plate so that the levers will be at the right heights when the clutch is installed. And don't forget to tap the bolt sharply with a soft-faced hammer afterwards to seat the adjusting nuts. Right, Tech. Then you work the levers up and down to be sure all the other parts are seated right. After that, make the final adjustment to be sure that the plate is parallel. And then, you stake the adjusting nuts and you're through. You ought to recheck the levers after that, Pete. Staking those nuts may change the setting. Is it much of a job to rebuild one of these clutches? No, Pete. After you mark the pressure plate and cover, you put the cover in the fixture and take the adjusting nuts off. Then release the fixture slowly and it's apart. When you're rebuilding a clutch, Pete, even if the springs look okay, you always should check them in a tester or compare them with a new spring. And now, lads, take a look at this clutch while we jump over on the other side of this record. Say, Pete, will you check the release bearing while I finish up here? Sure thing, Charlie. Put hand pressure on it, Pete. And if it feels rough or gritty when you turn it, you'll need a new one. By the way, Tech, how do you tell a release bearing noise from a pilot pushing noise? That's easy. If you hear the noise with the transmission in neutral, and the clutch pedal down, it's probably the release bearing. If you only hear it with the transmission in gear and the pedal down, it's probably the pilot bushing. But don't blame all noise on the bearing. Uneven levers might cause the bearing sleeve to shuffle on the shaft because of unequal loading. By the way, Pete, a new bearing can be pressed onto the sleeve, providing the sleeve is okay. Right, Tech. But be sure that you turn the bearing when you press it on, so you don't Brunel the race. Well, this one's okay, so I'll just wash it off. Yeah, but don't dunk the bearing, or you'll wash out all the lubricant. You know, it's pre-lubricated. And just fill this sleeve groove flush, Pete. If there's too much lube in it, the stuff will get pushed out onto the disc when you put the transmission in. How about the pilot bushing, Tech? It can take about a quarter teaspoonful or no more but be sure you put it in the bushing. Yeah, I know. If you put it on the pinion shaft, it will be scraped off on the splines before it reaches the bushing. Well, we're about ready to put this clutch back together, I guess. Hey, Pete, be careful not to get grease on those facings when you handle them. Don't worry, Tech. I know that the least bit of oil on the facings can cause clutch chatter. You're not kidding. Oil from a leaky rear main bearing grease from a release bearing, or the transmission, or even greasy hands will do it. Now, Pete, I'll just see how the disc fits on the clutch shaft. If there are burrs on the hub, it might be too tight. Yeah, that would make the clutch drag or even shatter. Hand me that arbor, will you, Pete, so I can line up the new disc? Good work. Otherwise, you might distort the disc. Did you hook the fork into the pullback springs on that release bearing? I'm way ahead of you, Tech. Now we're ready to adjust the linkage, eh, Charlie? Yeah, Pete. Say, I've heard that natural movement of the engine in the frame can cause clutch chatter. Is that true? Not on our cars, Pete. This linkage arrangement always compensates for any engine movement. How does it do that? Well, the linkage operates through this torque shaft. This means that any movement of the engine, different from the frame, is taken up in the ball pivots on both ends of the torque shaft. How come, Charlie? 
Why, one ball pivot is mounted rigidly on the frame. The other one on a spring bracket on the engine. I got it. Say, big boy, why don't you trace that linkage for Pete? Okay, Tech. When you depress the pedal, Pete, you pull this clutch pedal rod to the rear. At the same time, the torque shaft is turned counterclockwise. When this happens, the arm on the torque shaft moves the fork rod to the rear. And then, the fork rod moves the fork on its pivot and pushes the release bearing into the levers. Okay, Charlie, but what about the over-center spring? Well, it's this way. The over-center spring helps reduce the pressure needed to push the pedal down. Its proper position should be checked with a gauge. If it doesn't check, it'll have to be adjusted. Well, suppose I get at this fork rod adjustment now, Charlie. Wait a minute, Pete. You better check that over-center spring first. If this spring adjustment is off, we'd have to adjust the fork rod all over again. I'll handle that, Pete. Uh-oh. The over-center spring is off. That means you'll have to adjust the turnbuckle. Somebody messed up that adjustment trying to get pedal free play. You know, Pete, you never have to touch this turnbuckle unless the over-center spring is out of adjustment. And when you're adjusting this spring, Pete, be sure you always have pedal free play. There. That's okay. Now we can adjust the fork rod. Unhook the pullback spring and check the movement at the end of the fork. There we are. Five thirty seconds of an inch. That free play makes sure there's clearance between the release bearing and the levers. That means one inch free play at the pedal. Well, I guess that's it, boys. Hey, Bill, this job's all set. Okay, I'll take her out now. Hey, how about this clutch? It looks different to me. That's right, Pete. That's an Auburn clutch. The damper springs in this disc are enclosed in the steel housing. How come, Charlie? Well, that's to hold the grease that lubricates the damping mechanism. Huh? How can a damping mechanism work in grease? Well, in the first place, there's a button on either end of each coil spring in the damper unit. When the coil springs compress, the buttons will move along the tube springs that are inside the coil springs. These tube springs expand against the buttons, slowing them down. Now, if there wasn't any lubricant, these buttons would soon gall and jam. How is the lube kept in? They have gaskets between the hub and the housing to do that job, Pete. How is the plate retracted, Charlie? Well, when the levers are pushed in, they compress these springs, relieving the pressure on the pressure plate. At the same time, these plate return springs pull the pressure plate away from the disc. When you're adjusting the levers, Pete, push them down and check to see that the plate doesn't lag when the levers move. What if the plate does lag? The clutch won't disengage properly, and if you try to shift too fast, the gears will clash. So, the thing to do is to pull the retractor springs out and compare them with new ones. If they're okay, check the drive lugs to see if they bind. And to set the levers, Pete, you use these adjusting screws. Yeah. But be sure to tighten the lock nuts when you finish. Say, how do you take this clutch apart, fellas? Well, you use the same fixture, but with these adapters. Here's the way you work it. After the levers are compressed, you take out the adjusting screws and return springs. Then, put these steel blocks from the adapter kit under the outer ends of the levers. Those blocks keep the springs from flying out when you relieve the pressure on the levers. Right, Tech. And then... To remove a pressure spring, press the lever down by hand, pull out the steel block, then let the lever up slowly. And when you reassemble this clutch, install the springs by hand and reinsert the blocks before putting the clutch into the adjusting fixture. Good work, Skipper. Ah, here comes the boss. Nice work, boys. It checks out okay. Think you know about our clutches now, Pete? Sure do, Bill. It's all in keeping your eye peeled for a lot of little things. Well, I guess that just about buttons up the clutch story, unless Tech has something to say. That does it all right, fellas. Just remember, if you do a good job, 
and the driver doesn't abuse the clutch, that clutch will last and last and last. See you next month, fellas. <laughs>